open up by saying you should love yourself. Don't expect anything from anyone. Allow others to come and go as they please. With that said, I love you all. God bless and welcome. Here, at this moment, I'd like to look at some pictures of Iran. Old ruins of Iran. Really beautiful. What we would be told has been carved into stone. And pretty remarkable, reminding me of Planet of the Apes. I mean, at some point, a people, long after these people, would have discovered this. Already in ruins, and I think a lot of the wars must have had something to do with the cover-up of a lot of these ruins. These are some of the first photographs taken in Iran by this Luigi Pesky. This image is titled Gate of All Nations, Persepolis. And we're told from the 1840s to 60s, this is a silver print medium. And this collection is housed in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Just beautiful. Of course, a museum, no surprise. And just so ironic, because in my opinion, the same builders, what we generically may attribute to a Greco-Roman feel. And here we have the museum. These are ruins of a past civilization housing pictures of a past civilization. Well, anyway, I would like to go to that building, the museum, but I'm pretty happy to just sit here and check out these old 1800s pictures of Iran. Really a serious activity scene going on here. Even in ruins, not sure what this is. And this one looks like Jesus. And here we can see writing seeming very readable if we had a few pointers. And why do some things survive? Especially a column. Perhaps it resists the reset. It's round, protecting it from forces horizontally. And its pointiness might protect it from forces from above. I don't know. It didn't really hold up that well. And seeming like a good old life back then. If we're really to consider what we see here. Domesticated animals, hats, beautiful abilities of the builders and artisans. I'm not sure what they're wearing here. It reminds me of a sumo wrestler with their big diaper and here we see a great battle it looks like a horse battle and these two men and then this wise man here even in the stone look at the detail you can tell this is a wise old man this guy may be in his 60s with a sword and here again a feel for the locals really intricate headwear again look at the detail this looks like a young black man. This one seems to have been defaced a little bit. And maybe this one too. Looking a little ghoulish with his pointy nose. Really pointy there. And recently with my... What has proven to be a very large void and loss in my life. I am humbled. Humbled and many of my ambitions and desires are shattered. And that's okay. I'm a fan of the words of Lao Tzu when he says die without dying and you'll endure forever or something like that. But the idea that we should, we should die within our hardened ideas. It's not to say we actually die, die without dying, but be reborn. And I really know nothing. I mean, I still believe this is a cooked out structure. It was once an advanced civilization and we're only told lies about their story. It's similar to Petra, the glory that we see at Petra, only to be told some goat herders built it and then abandoned it got too preoccupied with their goats and i don't know in a way i feel broken but i also feel open and even as i look at these images it seems like i see more than i have before i mean who are these guys who are these three kingly men 
I'm amazed with the detail and the lifelike features in some of the more preserved ones. This really reminds me of things we see in India, where some gods will be standing on a person. And this looks like a man that they're standing on. They have this device here. This guy has a sword, but these two are each holding on to this device. It looks like a cowbell. And the cowbell appears to be cooking this body. It might just be a coincidence, but really interesting. These guys are standing on a body, and this guy is standing on some kind of lotus. The guy in the middle looks Chinese. The guy on the right, more Sumerian, perhaps. Stairs going to nowhere. Columns supporting nothing. I mean, you have to realize these are columns. If you have giant columns, you have a giant building. And here, in 1850, surprise, look what we have here. And then it gets heavier. Even in this black and white photo, I can see that this is like shiny copper or gold. Super tech. And not these guys, no. These guys aren't responsible for all this. They found it, just like everything we've just looked at, found. But here you have stuff in good condition, and not separate. No, these guys are just a step above Stone Age just hanging the laundry out to dry after washing it in the river. And look at the street. They're on a brick street. Everything, bricks and blocks and gold everywhere. Now we're gonna see a mega structure, totally cooked out, bricks almost looking like mud. And this also looks like some monastery in Nepal with its tiered levels. And the whole damn thing was a building. And here, here we have our laundry doers down below in their tents. Not even nice tents. I mean, they're probably decent, especially this one back here. But there's no comparison. We have a tent people and we have the ruins of a glorious building. Archways going into the core of the structure. This is a really nice ruin here. Just amazing. Look at this thing. I don't even know what to say. Really high-tech construction here. That's all that really needs to be pointed out. I love this structure. Okay, this one really kicks ass. This is so, so beautiful. And just a husk of what it once was. Look at this. This is not mud as it appears now. No, this has been rendered to shit and once was glorious. Just look, this is like the edge, just the corner of an arch here as well. Look at this, bricks revealed behind the facading. Amazing that this facading even held up this long. This man is very pleased with his new house. His father-in-law over here cursing at him. Unbelievable. Here we can see a window that has filled in with raw curtaining. Here we can see some stripage, like a barber's pole, candy cane style. Of course, everything has been hijacked from the past. Not surprising to see all the symbols on the same building. I could look at this forever, but let's move on. Well, this is like a cemetery. And even here, they're quick to roll out some scaffolding. Here, somebody's trying to build a building. A very nice, modest little building here. This is the roof line. They've put little supports. Very very smart on each corner so it doesn't rock back and forth and here you go not in the same category i love all these symbols just barely visible here we can see a nice group photo everyone in very pointy hats this guy felt it important to put his hand on this man's shoulder kind of press a little firmly not really sure about these guys these two might be brothers. Really an eclectic group of people here. Hanging out in Iran. So we can see those two buildings we saw earlier. All teched out. One, two, three, four, five balls. On the shiny dome. And this is a great picture. Here we see what looks like mud. Just cooked out. Looking like Utah. And as we go higher, we see more preservation. Preservation of the bricks and the structure. The arches, the domes, towers, and the detail, even in this cooked out state, like I said earlier, with the columns 
Something about the tall and the pointy seems to fare a little better. Look at the detail in this thing. What? And it's a ruin? These goat herders have just found this? Always proud to claim. This is my tower, he says. Here again, we can see the detail of this tower. Art relief in it. Unbelievable. This is so futuristic. You know this is futuristic. This is like computer sophistication. I mean, this is not hand doing. This is like 3D printed or something. Let me know your thoughts. Am I completely off today? Is this as amazing to you as it is to me? And it just seems to get better and better. I'm reluctant to cease this exploration. It's so good. Here we see little castle towers on the corners, turrets, just in ruins, just cooked out, everything cooked. But we still see some tech up here. Like that shiny dome has now been rendered into something that others would call primitive, but is anything but unbelievable here. And what kind of stuff do I enjoy most lately? I guess it's always the same. I enjoy what Joseph Campbell would call the hero's journey. The struggles of everyday life coming from individual perspective. I like to hear what people think. And yes, it's nice to have a well-digested idea presented either in a video or a book. But I also like when people just kind of unplug share their experiences, their feelings about certain things. At least for me, such musings are the most unifying, in my opinion. Discussing our struggles as humans. And I think ultimately this is what it means to be human, to question a lot of things. And if people aren't questioning a lot of things, they're either stupid or blind. This might be blind acceptance of things they've been told. Either way, both stupid, in my opinion. And I've said it many times on this channel, I'm not a religious man, but I am a man of God. To not believe in some greater creative force flowing through this realm, within and without, one would have to be a fool to think a caterpillar could cocoon itself up, turn back into liquid and re-emerge as a butterfly is nothing short of genius, pure intelligence, in which we can't really understand. We might wrap our heads around the idea, but such alchemy is beyond the abilities that we possess. This reminding me of lime kilns, and we can see brick covered with a coating, and we see these kiln-like structures running all along the buildings, just like we see at the lime kilns everywhere. And it was my hypothesis when I first discovered these kilns that the structures went down further, especially when walking around kiln sites. You can absolutely feel the hollowness below you as you walk around. So I can't prove anything, and I don't know. Sometimes I don't care. But on a good day, I would tell you we are just a little piece of God. For some time I believed in a soul, and I still believe in a soul. I mean, without such a thing, a body is just a corpse. But I used to believe that maybe it was like our soul, like we got to keep it. And I don't feel that today. I feel like we give our soul back. It was only borrowed. And in that sense, it is always the same soul, birthed into an unknown realm with the gift of amnesia. Certainly the knowledge would be too heavy for a child. And if we all knew this experiment of creation just wouldn't work. And I think the moment is the only true purpose, not the future, not rectifying the past, but only the moment. For some, the moment is not enough, but really it's all that we have. And you can be robbed of the moment as we learn in Taoism and old Chinese wisdom. And others can rob us, and they can take away our peace, or at least have the potential to. And nobody's gonna help you be in the moment. I mean, maybe some guru, but for the most part, everyone is trying to get you to rally 
behind some cause, and that could be religious or political or just some ego-centered ideas. And I think we should have compassion for the dramas of others, but we shouldn't get sucked into them. And I hope there's no drama in this video. This video is pure exploration, eyes open and just having a good look at the remains of a past reset, that's all. And this building kicks ass even in ruins with its little arched flares up here and sharp, perfect corners all throughout. And I think not only was this meant to be beautiful, but it was meant to have strength and not from bows and arrows or cannonballs, like they tell us with star forts, but rather strength from the inside, as if this was some sort of water tower, perhaps. Just my thoughts. And it looks like somebody's busted in here, really as perfect as these bricks are on this round tower. There's no excuse for this crude hole. This building now rendered into a blob, especially at the bottom. And the proud inheritor. I think it might be a woman. And sometimes things turning to stone, or what seems like stone. These ones may have been concrete, and sometimes turning to mud, which will have been bricks. And here a look at the skyline. I mean, absolutely amazing. This aqueduct system from hell. Brick block remains of buildings underneath. Can you imagine this paradise? Even this, this really looks modern. Now totally cooked out, looking primitive, but no doubt at one time a beautiful, elegant city. Really cool. So in a way, my life externally kind of feels like a failure as of late. I mean, I've realized my limitations with my living situation, the lack of community, not having enough power, needing to double my solar system. And I guess it's a blessing to know that you've reached your limits, to know what your limits are. Now I can prepare accordingly in the present for the future. And really not only the future, but for the present as well. My house has also reached its limits. I'm very happy with my new house. It's pretty much perfect. For most people, it would be adequate. And it is with the exception of my stove. I'm not very happy with that small stove. Only because it's hard to cut wood that small to fit into a small stove. A lot of labor. But otherwise, it's a great stove and very efficient. Mostly my lack of an area to do yoga. I'm able to do qigong as you stand up when you do qigong. But for yoga, I think you need like maybe an 8x8 eight eight area. It's something that calls to me in some self-imposed, urgent way. And yet I just don't have the space. If it was warmer, I would do it outside. But I think moving forward, it's something that I will need. Which is why I mentioned in a past video, I plan on building another house. Just a little bit bigger. It probably doesn't matter. I mean, my flexibility is what will suffer. But going back to God, this is our gift. The divine spark, which animates the body. Also a gift. The body absolutely on loan, eventually melting back into the earth. And all these people in these photos have melted by now. Fertilized this ground. And yet these buildings looking like the same condition as modern brick ruins in many cases. And when I say modern, I mean like the 1850s, early 1900s. This looks like an airport tower or something. And also seeming like the giant walls outside of the San Francisco World's Fair buildings. Same massive walls with these frills almost looks like latticing so for today i thank you for joining me i hope this video didn't suck i love you all god bless and i'll see you next week and i guess i'll come in for a bonus if you're still here so i don't know how interesting this is i'm interested and i've been interested in this for quite a while I started hearing about this on Coast to Coast AM 
along with other weather modification. A lot of it served up freely, like this. Congress.gov. Thank you, Congress. What are you guys up to in Congress? Oh, well, here's a bill you guys clearly passed in 2016. And I really don't understand. I mean, we're kind of gaslit when it comes to this subject. In a way, I don't even know if it gets a little banner. But here it is. This is legit, sometimes referred to as dew, like Mountain Dew. I knew someone who drank Mountain Dew indefinitely until he started urinating blood. And I think he cut back. Last time I saw him, he was missing a bunch of teeth. Kind of normal around here where I live. And then suddenly you'll see someone. If things are going well, they'll have new teeth, fake teeth, similar to Hollywood. Well, even out here in the country, Personally, I like my old teeth. I continue to brush with coconut oil, a couple drops of orange essential oil, and a little baking soda. It helps provide grit. But anyway, back to these types of arms. So weird the way they call arms, arms. What a boring video. What am I gonna do with this video? Staring at this page. At least I could have some pictures of nature up in the corner as we review this boring material. So these directed energy things are used. S2778. There we go. The people's appointed under the assumption that they've been elected to spend the people's money. What are they spending it on? Oh, you know, these weapons, the usual. But this is a little unusual. So this bill is only to amend Title 10 to provide for the rapid acquisition of directed energy weapon systems by the Department of Defense and for other purposes. A little slush fund for even more secret projects. Here we go. In the Senate of the United States, April 12th, 2016, Mr. Heinrich and Mr. Einhoff introduced a bill not just to provide the acquisition of these weapons, but to provide the rapid acquisition. And really, this is old tech, and no doubt they've had it all along. But I don't know, for whatever reason, the corruptibles must do their deeds in the open. I don't know why. I'm not part of the group, but I can see what they're doing. And this is one of their little projects. It says here the committee of the Senate notes in the report that since 1960, the Department of Defense has invested more than six billion in directed energy science and technology initiatives. But the poor department's initiatives are not resourced at levels necessary to transition them to full-scale acquisition programs. There we go, since 1960. So everybody's focused on the moon, and these guys have another little side hustle going on. And again, this is all boring and not surprising, but I just thought I would share.